Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, welcome back to another episode of Amazing Worlds, where today I am going to be reviewing slash thinking about, uh, dissecting a little bit, the first law universe, the first law world by Joe Abercrombie. So the first question that we've got to answer is, so the first law is the is the child, is the, is the magnum opus of British author Joe Abercrombie, a.k.a. Lord Grimdark. So what it is, is a Grimdark series, and if you don't know what Grimdark is, that's a completely different video. You can go and find it out there. I am not going to go uh, into that, but it is what it is. Um, so the first law universe is made up of the first law trilogy, that was the original trilogy in the series, followed by three standalone novels, novels, uh, best served called The Heroes and Red Country, a short story collection called Sharp Ends, and finally The Age of Madness trilogy. Now, let's talk about world building. Now, world building is not exactly a strong point of Joe Abercrombie. I think pretty much um, consciously he decided to keep it very relatable to medieval Europe. I mean, for God's sake, you have a country called Angland there, Angland, right? And then you've got the Northmen to the north, um, which are your Vikings, and then you've got this sort of other country to the east, which is very much sort of a pre-Renaissance, sort of Renaissance type Italy, where even the names sound Italian. And there's a city that he mentions in Best Surf Cold, where the noble houses compete to see who can build the tallest tower in their home, which is pretty much the city of uh, Bologna in Italy. So it's a very instantly recognizable world. I mean, to the south, we have these sort of black skinned colored people that look fairly generically African uh, there. So even the naming conventions, uh, you know, you may have in the present day, in the current world, sort of Dutch naming conventions with a van in the names. You may know someone called Peter van der Meer. Well, in the first law, we switched their van for the Dan, and we have his son Dan Glotta. So very much, you know, a very instantly recognizable, very simple uh, world building there. Well, the magic system, all we can say is that there is no magic. Uh, that's not as necessarily and strictly true. But the magic component of the first law is so, so small, it's so, so tiny, that I can say there's no magic, you don't have to deal with uh, a magic system. So, if you're into magic systems, this is not for you. Now, the next question is the fantasy elements. And once again, well, there is no fantasy either. There's no fantastical creatures. That's not strictly true, but there are so little um, that it's almost negligible. And um, yeah, no fantasy elements, no magic system, and no crazy, amazing, incredible world building. So what about... No, there is no heroic characters. This is a green dark series. Pretty much every character that we follow is a self-serving, selfish so-and-so epithet that you want to may insert in there. And at times you may find yourself rooting for a torturer or clearly someone that exploits people for her benefit. So really, if you are after heroic characters, they are going to inspire you, that are going to uplift you, that are going to make you want to be a better person. Well, this is not for you. Well, the thing is, I could possibly, conceivably, realistically say that this is a pseudo-history series, a pseudo-fictional history series, because we don't have the classic element, elements of fantasy in here. I think the first assessment that can be made here, and I think the conscious um, effort that Joe Abercrombie tried to put across, is that this is a total 
subversion of the classic fantasy tropes. So if you're fed up, if you cannot relate to classic fantasy, then this is for you. Um, the First Lord trilogy, the original trilogy, is very much a antithesis of, say, Lord of the Rings. So a reluctant hero, a reluctant king in Aragorn becomes a reluctant wannabe king in Jezal in the First Lord, but he's not a hero. He's someone that everyone makes fun of. Everyone uh, thinks he's a useless, a silly, uh, easy to manipulate puppet king. Um, that apparently he's the only person that doesn't know that his queen to be is actually a lesbian, and it becomes the butt end of many jokes. We have one of those Jungian archetypes, the sage, the wise man, the wizard, the leader in the figure of Bayaz. Well, I think anyone that has read the series, it's fair to say that Bayaz is not Gandalf, it's not Moiraine, it's not Fisban. If you don't know any of those names, you need to do a bit of background reading in fantasy. And my point that I've made sort of in private conversations is that possibly the first law trilogy is best enjoyed if you've got a background reading in classic fantasy, because, because then uh, it is a lot easier to spot and understand the tropes that uh, Abercrombie is twisting and plunging the knife deep inside. I'm not saying that you have to have read everything written pre-1995. I'm just saying that it helps if you have a familiarity with the classic fantasy tropes and it may perhaps uh, shed some light into what the first law uh, trilogy was all about, basically. That subversion of, of the classic expectations. Now, if we don't have heroic characters to follow, what have we got? Well, we have is characters that go on a journey, and they're fairly well fleshed out, realized characters. Now, this journey that these characters go on is not necessarily going to ha have a happy ending. These characters are not necessarily going to go on a redemption journey, and it's not necessarily the case that the nice, good guys win in the end. More often than not, it's exactly the opposite of, of what I've said. So, nice guys lose, characters don't get redemption, they remain as um, bitter, twisted and cynical as they were at the beginning of the story, or characters start with, a, with the hopes and dreams to be better people, to better the world, to achieve something meaningful in their lives, and they just fail. The world beats them down. That, that, that's what permeates uh, the first law of world, universe, throughout all these different iterations. Um, and, but, but these characters are memorable. So we've got Sandan Glotka, uh, the torturer, you know, Bayaz, the first of the Magi, King Jezal, um, one of my favorites, Nico Mokoska, the mercenary for hire, the barbarian, Logan Nine Fingers, and also Cole Shivers. I think it's fair to say that at some point these barbarians, these northmen, become a little bit interchangeable and that's a fair assessment, I think that's a fair criticism, but you do get fairly well, very well realized characters throughout the whole series. The final point of consideration is where should you read, where should you start uh, with the first law. Now, the whole series is meant to be read in publication order. You should start with the first law trilogy, follow with the standalones, sharp pens at some point before Age of Madness, and then finish with the final trilogy, The Age of Madness. However, I can appreciate and understand that it'd be difficult to commit to nine, ten-ish book series. And maybe if you want to dip your toes, the standalones aren't a bad place to start because they are standalones. They are meant to be stories set in the world that somewhat advance the plot. So events in the three standalones 
are vaguely referenced in the Age of Madness, so but they're not necessarily required reading. Obviously, it offers a much richer reading experience and immersion in the first law if you read everything. But with the standalones, um, there seems to be two camps, and throughout the whole reading of the series, my enjoyment has been up and down, as would be expected. For me, best self called, best self called, sorry, is probably the high point of the first law, possibly with the middle book in Age of Madness. So those two books for me are the best in the in the whole thing. The standalones, my enjoyment of them went sort of downhill. Um, best of called the heroes. Red Country, which seems to run counter to what other people, they seem to think that uh, Red Country is the best of the standalones. And anyway, opinions, subjective tastes, uh, whatever. So you could read um, Best of Cold, which is kind of reminiscent of Scott Lynch's Gentleman Bastards, that, that, if you are familiar with that series, so you could get a feel for it. And then go back to the first law and, and see if you want to carry on from there. All in all, I think the first law is, particularly the first trilogy, is an enjoyable read. So are some of the standalones. I didn't care much for the themes and the message of the Age of Madness, uh, but I've read them. It's all complete for me. I've got the different reviews in the channel, so you can check them. Uh, the two trilogies and the standalones. I haven't read Sharpens. I may pick it up at some point, but I'm not totally uh, like desperate for it. And the way Age of Madness finishes, there are hints that Abercrombie may come back to the First Law universe. Now he's doing a new theme with, I think, elves in the Vatican, some sort of weird new series that he he's working on. I can understand that after 9 slash 10 books, he may be fed up of the first long was to write something else and that's perfectly fine by me and totally acceptable um, but maybe perhaps there's a, an open door in the future that we may get more of this of this world um, but anyway this is what I have for for today I hope you found the video helpful uh, informative that maybe it was enjoyable please like subscribe comment let me know what you think are you interested have you read it what are your thoughts and opinions? And thank you for watching. Thank you very so much. Take loads and loads of care and I will see you soon. Bye.